have to make a decision. And the people are going to have to attack the pigs. The people are going to have to stand up against the pigs. That's what the pastors are doing. That's what the pastors are doing all over the world. We're not a racist organization because we understand that racism is an excuse used for capitalism. And we know that racism is just is, is a byproduct of capitalism. If we don't hate the motherfucker uh, white people, we hate the oppressor, whether he be white, black, brown, or yellow. We're going to fight racism, not racism, but we're going to fight the solidarity. We said we're not going to fight capitalism with black capitalism, but we're going to fight it with socialism. Everything would be all right if everything was put back in the hands of the people. And we're going to have to put it back in the hands of the people. And these people in this class have divided themselves. They say, I'm black and I hate white people. I'm white and I hate black people. I'm Latin American and I hate hillbillies. I'm hillbillies and I hate Indians. So we're fighting amongst each other. Nothing more important than stopping fascism because fascism will stop us. Yo, what's up, YouTube? This is your boy, Be Back Again. And in honor of Black History Month, I'm doing a video on none other than Fred Hampton, born in 1948. He he grew up in Chicago, Illinois, with both his parents. He actually lived in the suburbs for a while. And from an early age, he was he was aware of his surroundings. From, from an early age, as early as 10, he was known to, to gather a lot of kids from the neighborhood and come together and just, you just hang out and cook for them. And, and even, even in high school, he noticed the, the inequalities of the lack of black teachers and the, the lack of justice. He, he used to stage walkouts. Like at, at like 17, 18, he had the power and the voice to get a lot of people to stage walkouts. And once he graduated, he, he quickly became the chairman of the Black Panther group in, in Chicago. So once he did that, he would always, he would always get, gather a lot of people just talking about the inequalities. And the thing that really got me onto Fred Hampton recently was the movie Judas and the Black Messiah. If y'all haven't saw that movie, y'all should definitely check it out because it, it gave me a lot of knowledge that I, that I didn't know about. So by the time the late 60s came, um, Malcolm X already got killed. Dr. King already got killed. So they was, they was basically just talking about how, how all the black leaders that's, that's like protesting and going against the system, he get killed, but he wasn't scared. He was a fearless young leader. It's just, it's mind blowing to me that he was only 21, just, just talking all this real stuff. And just, he wasn't afraid. And by, when it was almost close to his death, the, F, the FBI looked at him as a threat. So what they did was got an informant, William O'Neill. William O'Neill, he was he was arrested for petty crimes like car theft and you know just pickpocketing. So they said, look, we're gonna give you 15 years unless you go in, disguise yourself as a Black Panther, get close to Fran Hampton, and let us know all the you know all the answers out. So long story short, he did that. He did that. He got close to Fred Hampton, and he ended up telling the FBI, you know, the plans. And sadly, the night he got killed, it was him and other other people, including his eight-month pregnant girlfriend. He left at like 1.30 in the morning. They went in, they killed everybody. The rumor is that he actually slipped something in Fred Hampton drink that same night, which left them like knocked out that whole raid. And the police actually went in there and shot Fred Hampton twice in his head. And William O'Neill, years later, actually committed suicide by running into traffic because the years of guilt was well, just interesting. He was a fearless young leader, gone too soon. He died December 4th, 1969, the same day that Jay-Z was born. But yeah, that's a short history of Fred Hampton. What y'all think about this? Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. This your boy, be in the mouth.